Hello, I'm David Leeming, working in the Pacific Islands region. This demo illustrates a wide range of open educational resources that are available for use with the OLPC School Server, featuring some excellent material from UNESCO. It focuses on the more traditional use of a server as an electronic library, although it does touch on the unique collaborative functionality enabled by the server, but only in part. The Access School Server can make available rich libraries of resources even to the most remote schools where Internet access is not available. In my demo, I'm using four Exo laptops and an old Toshiba laptop running version 0.5 of the server. UNESCO's Bangkok office have been running a program called Strengthening ICT in Schools in ASEAN Setting. They've produced two excellent CDs of animated multimedia learning objects, mainly targeting secondary schools. However, the material is very accessible and relevant to primary schools, where teachers can use it to improve subject knowledge, and in class, students can browse through it in and out of school hours. Laptops connected to the server wirelessly on a school mesh, as this one is, access the contents through the browser. I've added a link to the Moodle homepage seen here, which takes you to the folders of browsable, mainly HTML content. In this case, I've created a front page for the Solomon Islands. The user can then browse the resources on the school server. Moodle can also be used to manage content, of course, but that's not included in this demo. Now let's have a look at the material from UNESCO, which I've loaded on the server. I'm demonstrating UNESCO's 2008 collection, and this is a home page. It has sections for English, maths, and science, each containing hundreds of learning objects that are largely relevant to secondary school curricula in many countries, although, of course, it's only in English. It would be great if countries use this as an example of best practice to localize the material, and I'm sure UNESCO would be happy to collaborate. Now let's look at an example from the math section. We have a choice of geometry, calculus, algebra, and mixed, and this is the mixed math section. Each of these items on the screen is a learning object, mostly written in shockwave flash and fully an animated and interactive. This first example is all about the properties of a circle. Typically, the learning object will present some information and theory with illustrations and worked solutions to problems and then it's all followed up with some quizzes or assessment. And note how responsive and fast it is on the EXO laptop. To get back to the menu, one clicks on the black back arrow at the top of the browser. The second example I'll show you concerns an old favourite, Pythagoras. Whilst watching this, consider how much more productive a teacher can be if students can view this high quality presentation while the teacher focuses more on the students and the learning activities and less on the blackboard and instruction from the front of the class. The use of the computer is also a great motivator, of course, highly engaging for the students. Here's another example, all about right angle triangles. And some more examples of the uh, UNESCO content taken at random from the science and the English sections. Here's a really nice example from the science section. And this example is all about indicators. You can move the control at the bottom to change the pH and the colors of the various indicators at the top change color in response. But now for the real magic. The mesh networking on the laptops allows the teacher to share resources and activities with students and students to collaborate between themselves, of course. If we are using the school server mesh, then any resource brought up on, say, the teacher's laptop can be broadcast to all the students. 
It's all wireless, and this demonstration shows how simple it is to operate. Let's assume a teacher wants to share an example about tr trigonometry, this one here. She changes the sharing control at the top of the browser from private to my neighborhood, like that, which causes an icon to appear on the network view of the student's laptops. They can then click on that to join in with the lesson activity. The teacher then clicks on the bookmark control at the top of the browser, which causes an icon to appear at the bottom of the browser, including the students, and they can click on the icon, and instantly they will be viewing the same resource. Moving away now from the UNESCO material, here is an example of some technical or vocational learning resources with a local relevance. This is an offline version of an HTML website called TaroPest, created by regional organizations in association with the University of Queensland. It's intended as a diagnostic tool for subsistence farmers in the Pacific Islands, where the taro plant is a major staple food. The site allows them to drill down through the menus to identify the cause of crop disease. This illustration is important when we remember that the laptops go home with the children after school and these kind of resources can widen the impacts from the academic side of education to continuing education and for those not at school. Of course, all Pacific Islanders are farmers in one way or another and it's important to develop relevant educational materials as part of their education. The Wiki Educator is another source of open educational resources. These can be downloaded as IMS content packages and loaded on the school server both in Moodle or as a standalone browsable HTML. Here we see some early childhood education resources that have been downloaded from the Wiki Educator. The Wiki Educator, of course, is by the Commonwealth of Learning. This is another example of locally created educational resources, this one featuring turtle conservation. This could be used both in and out of the classroom and will certainly reach a far wider audience than just the primary school students. An interesting HTML course authoring tool called XE Learning, developed at Auckland University was used to create this resource. And I'll go on to show you some resources that were produced by teachers using the right activity during some of the training sessions conducted in the Pacific Islands. And this also features the collaborative feature in the laptops. This is a learning resource for English. It's basically a closed exercise. We have to fill in the missing word. So the teacher can bring that up from the server and then she can share it with the class, changing the control to my neighborhood causes the icon to appear. The students click on it to join in, and then they are all viewing the same resource. The difference in this case is that the right activity um, can be edited. You can edit the material. So this brings up the possibility of collaborative editing. So here we see the teachers making an edit there. And on the students' laptops, you can see the changes occurring in real time. That concludes my demonstration. For more information, go to the OLPC Oceania section of the One Laptop Per Child wiki. Thank you very much.